which is really interesting. And how, and how, how old was he when he was mature? Was he like 18? <laughs> I think he was about 30, around 30 or so. I mean, technically he was a genius. If he wrote that when he was 16, it's really well done. Of course, a few errors and arrogance because you're a teenager and you think you know everything. Yeah. But, uh, with the other one, it became a bit more uh, structured and humble. Equally Scottish. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But remember, yeah. no Netflix though, right? Like nothing gets exactly. distracted by you. You'd be a lot more productive when you were. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah, and 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 you like you had time. And as I think well. it usually it yeah. was one of those uh, boys' school. There were no girls around. I mean, you know, it's 18th century, 17th century. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> a lot of attention towards the academics. Yes. Man. Yes. Now in our world, I think it's an achievement that you actually get to write something, to create something, because you've got so many distractions, so many ways you could spend your time and waste and, your energy. And back in the times, there's no, there were no obligation to make business out of writing books. And, uh, you know, well, we, we have to acknowledge that those who wrote book at the time, they were in position to take the time to... to to do it most of the time. I mean, the most known books at this time, especially in philosophy and ethics, were from people with the, yeah, so a mean, situation you know, that allowed the time, it. You think about Leibniz or Goethe, these were like encyclopedias, walking encyclopedias. Yes. And you could say that up to that point, you could have all the knowledge in the world. You could read all the books in the world if you really wanted to. And mm -hmm. you know, just skim through them. But now it's just impossible it's even to fathom how many books are published per day <laughs> even that is a, a crazy feat yes but, yeah with the exponential you just can't can't trace that that level of uh, productivity yes but i would say that they were like um at least from from what we know from this period they, they were like um um Something, something around the fact that you you were doing it for the inquiry and you know the endeavor of exploring the subject, not not really for like writing a book was just a way to document your your process in a sense. It's yeah, less... and it was that genuine um, uh, genuine belief that you could know everything if you really wanted yeah. to take your thought to the next level you could find out something and now we know that's not true <laughs> the other thing about it too is if you, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the numbers were but if you combine that effort and compare it to the actual percentage of the population who could even read yes right? yeah like it's it's never meant to be distributed in that sense it's meant to be distributed you know and and, and often a lot of these things started as letters yeah Right? Yes. Like between two or three people that you know, were exchanging ideas, and then this became the essentially the notebook of that exchange. The you know. Yes. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, the yeah. practice is still obvious even now. They that's how people uh, write books, especially in philosophy, very high literature, and then they exchange it amongst each other, and you're like, does anyone else read it? No. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's, it's almost like it, 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 there's not necessarily a hierarchy, but it comes in frequencies. You know, knowledge has certain frequencies, different books, different contents are placed under certain frequencies of uh, thought. So you get philosophy, which is a bit maybe, I don't know if it's higher or lower, but it's definitely a very niche frequency. <laughs> and then you maybe get uh, mass production books like Harry Potter, which is just so appealing for so many people. Yeah. And, you know, different frequencies for religious books as well. And just wait, like it's a customer segmentation, but on a very, <laughs> uh, yeah, different level. It's, yeah. you don't actually I select. I think yes. it also matters when historically you are exposed to the books, right? Like, the, the fact that when I was going through school, it was the height of the postmodern, like post-structuralist time of writing 
that makes you read things in a certain way and they're all written in these doubling back cyclical ways that they need to do because they need to erase any kind of um, ability to pin down what something means, mm. right? Especially the French, like the French philosophers, continental philosophers at the time, that, that everything becomes really cyclical because it's very much about stamping on what you just said and kind of negating the fact that what you just said can absolutely mean anything. And then that just <laughs> that kind of affects you reading all books around philosophy from then on. You know, whereas I think if you were re read books in the 50s, potentially before that happened, you wouldn't be, I don't know if it's like cynical about philosophy or, or like just see it as hyper subjective mm. in a way that you, that you have a different approach to the way that you, that you read these books. Yeah, definitely. Treat them more like, like poetry than like serious thought in a way. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I can't say there's much, you know, after 2000, what can you say about the current uh, literature, yeah. at least attitude to literature? Because I think it's it's not no longer so much about the, the postmodern ways. Yeah. It's It's been diluted, democratized, and, mm. you know, uh, I don't think people even form these attitudes anymore. The, it's more like a whim or a preference that you get uh, part of how you build your own identity or something. You know, the study of classics have become like, oh, it's outdated. You don't want to learn that anymore, even though it's still relevant and useful for a foundation. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> to think about my high school years and what were people reading, definitely was horrible it was like twilight saga and <laughs> <laughs> i just couldn't i couldn't look at that and be serious my first high school book was uh umberto echo the name of the rose and wow. uh, i think you know that that's how it builds you it, i think you're right mark you know it's sometimes it, it's got to do with this historicity but you actually tap into a history when you begin reading books from different times mm -hmm. and you develop a certain mind you know, like your mind becomes more historically linked to that. You become to begin to adopt certain beliefs around it. And the depth is very, yeah, influenced by it. You know, reading now Kant would make me a bit more, let's say, dogmatic around ethics. Let's say, <laughs> universalism. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I'd be quicker to, 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 to dispose of postmodern views. You know, I'd be like, nah, that's bullshit. They're just uh, shameless. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, you, you, if you like, and I, I guess it depends how you like in which order you read certain yeah. things as well. Because, like, if you, if you, if you go by the, I mean, like in philosophy and and ethics, you, if you start with like, all um, ultra uh, relativist, uh, you know, perspectives, and then you go back to Kant. I mean, it's it's a hard time for you, like to read, just to read it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's it's too extremes, and and if you have not, you don't have this. If you if you are not prepared to adjust your filters when you read it, I mean, it it can be a really dissonant, you know, <laughs> type of reading, mm -hmm. right? I think that it's like in in my case anyway. I was reading this stuff that didn't make any sense. And then you have to work backwards to figure out the foundations that they're trying yes. to kick out from under. Like, if you don't understand what they're kicking at, they don't. It's like, if you don't understand the late, you know, 18th century, it's hard to understand modernism. Yeah. The right. context, you, you need the, the understand, uh, understanding of the context. That... Of, the, of the context. And so you yeah. end up, yeah. I, I don't know if everybody's like this, but you, you end up dipping your toe in at a certain part of that evolution of thought and then you have to go backwards to build the foundation so that you can understand and you end up kind of going almost reverse chronologically to understand how the stuff was built up mm -hmm. and i think that that initial starting point affects the way that you see that edifice <laughs> yes so yes that's true yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. We were, we, we were discussing with uh, someone from the IXDA uh, uh, association. We are, st- we are trying to write a book uh, about uh, rabbit holes. <laughs> and this is the, exactly what you described uh, in that sense. Um, what do you uh, say about, about rabbit holes? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we are trying to write a book about rabbit holes with the excuse of discussing about systemic design and, you know, complexity and stuff like that. Because, you know, these are these kind of subjects where you, you cannot understand, you cannot truly really understand them. Like, it's, uh, there's always something else connected. And you, you start from somewhere and you, you feel like you, you grasped it, like you, you have an understanding. Then you discover something that is linked to what you just discovered that changed your perspective of, about what you just read, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so you have to go back and revise what you understood. And, and, and this is a tendency of rabbit holes in general. It's like you, it's not like there's, there are levels. In, in, in the sense that there are, there are information that that have a certain hierarchy, it's all connected. So it's a flat. There's no hierarchy. It's flat. Mm-hmm. But each one of them brings new perspectives about the subject <laughs> at, at, as a as a whole. You know, and and you, but ethics is exactly like that. If you go to philosophy and certain movements, you 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 might discover like some hardcore you know, uh, thinkers about something and then some people that tries to, to, to bridge uh, different perspectives together and et cetera, et cetera. And, and so you, you might, you know, never end up this, this quest of understanding that, that movement, for instance, or understanding a certain subject. And it's exactly the same with, with systemic design and, I mean, system thinking and, and complexity because, because those are not, constructed i mean it's not like something really cohesive at, at, as a subject it's something that is built through many disciplines and many perspectives and many uh you know ways of approaching it and and you cannot like have a, a full understanding of it like it's not really possible you know and if i discuss with someone else that 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 learns or read about that he will have uh or she would have a uh, uh, a different like perspective on that. Would that you sense. say that there could be like uh, I'm, I'm wondering whether there could be different types of rabbit hole in terms of like you know species mm. of rabbit holes? <laughs> like you know, I because I, what you describe, yeah, there's different rabbits. Like... So you know, <laughs> yeah. the size so, might change. Uh, <laughs> but like you know, there's branching. Yeah. You know, this idea of branching yes. when you find something and that leads you to something else, and then you jump and you you kind of go. <laughs> Or maybe there could be something that just deepens. You know, you go on one trajectory and just broadens and broadens. Yes. So I think that there could be different approaches depending on the kind of solutions and problems you're yeah. finding yourself yeah. into. But when and we also, were... do you do you see a space at the end of the hole? Like, mm. does it take you to an explored space, or you're just still in yeah. the rabbit hole? Yeah. It, How do it's you a, a strange, almost algorithmic aspect to it right like the, the idea of tiktok which is, is in itself designed to be a rabbit hole for example right yeah yes but you're making up the when you talk about the types of rabbit holes there is an algorithmic kind of idea behind that about the way that you move from one piece of knowledge to another from one piece of content to another yeah yeah i agree it's it's true it's like some news feeds and then stuff like that like you yeah. um yeah, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and stuff like that. Like endless uh, feeds of things. Yeah. I'm trying to decide if there's a strange irony to the fact that something like systems thinking um, is such a rabbit hole that you can't figure it out. <laughs> um, as a not as a not as a term, I would say I agree. You can you can find boundaries. Yeah. But as a general concept, it's not necessarily true because there's a lot of things that are connected that allowed system thinking as a thing that had to exist that are part of the rabbit hole of system thinking. And that if you go down those different, you know, uh, uh, linkage, 
uh, you you might end up in different, like in totally different or, or even totally opposite ways, uh, opposite direction directions, um, because you can tie, you you can go back to cybernetics and what allowed cybernetics to exist. You can go to like more on the complexity sciences and and things that relates to quantum theory and chaos and stuff like that. So it like it's so vast as a as a as a not as a term where especially if we if think of, about that as a as a practical thing like it it can be really narrow if we if we want it to be so i, I agree but um as um you know as a concept to to explore it can be really vast uh, i would say so yeah it, it depends if you if you want to bring some some boundaries and 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 to put some some limits to to it, um, and I, <clears throat> I would what say determines the, the the depth of the rabbit hole. Is it the available knowledge or is it the pursuit of the individual? Or <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's a really good question. But I, th there were two. I mean. In, the, in our discussion so far, uh, there were two concepts that I find really interesting. Is the fact that uh, a rabbit hole is has some utility if the the, the people that that you know uh, navigate them. Um, I mean, in their utility, rabbit holes they they they, they tend to have something that that fi I find interesting is like people that can connect others to those rabbit holes they can highlight some information some key information from that rabbit hole that doesn't you know require someone to go through all the information or even the same process that allowed them to discover it so there's some kind of you know uh if you could put just spotlights on some pieces that you discovered along but there's no no way for these people to find the same path to, to access those information. So they might find themselves connections and go through their own rabbit holes. But it's some kind of, I, I do feel like it's some kind of individual uh, thing. Uh, but yeah, it would be interesting to find a, a collective rabbit hole, something like that. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have one in mind actually, but it would be interesting. And, and the other concept that I find interesting is to say, oh, it's not a network in fact, it's more like a, a black hole. It's more like a, it's not a rabbit hole. It's a it's a black hole, in the sense that um, if you put it as a you know uh, as a flat no hierarchy stuff, you end up with a, a, a network of things interconnected, and it's so vast that it actually you could say it has no it does have no limit. The, the only limit is what you can learn in one life, right? <clears throat> and and you could say no. In fact, there's some kind of organizations. It's, it's just that you don't decide it really. It's like um, the concept of uh, attractors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to say it's got a gravitational kind of quality yeah. to it, right? And, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and rabbit holes are gravity wells in that sense. That mm -hmm. they, they attract things in a certain way, and all the information that gravitates around it <clears throat> um, could be starting points for you to discover. But there's some kinds of, of thing that is central, and you can only see it as the absence of of matter of uh, you know of matter of uh, like it's like black holes you you don't see them you see just the effect that it has on on you know on the universe and it's exactly the same thing like a rabbit hole is not visible in itself but is visible by contrast to all the information that gra gravitates around it so, so something like that. Could you say that one type of rabbit hole would be the absence of something you know like we have this, these uh, what triggers us to to go and figure out systems thinking or other you know systemic design all these things is because there is an absence that kind of draws us into it so the rabbit hole is not the systems thinking but it's it's more like the effect it has on us and you know our responses to go and figure it out through these things which look like tiny rabbit holes so yeah we, we met, we're trying to fill up the rabbit hole actually yeah that's not uh the hole the hole itself is just an interface yeah right mm. between two things because 
because once you're in the hole, you're actually in a warren, right? If you want to, like a rabbit warren, if you want to go, if you want to take the metaphor fully, the hole is only the interface between one world and the world of the, of the warren itself, right? Yeah. So, yeah. The black, but also, the black hole is kind of, um, it's kind of ominous because it means once you go in, likelihood is you're not coming out. <laughs> well, yeah. I, only if you only if you pass the horizon, uh, exactly. horizon, yeah, you the horizon, and then you and then yeah. you're trying to figure out exactly what Stanley Kubrick meant at the end of 2001. Yes, and, you, know. <laughs> you reborn yourself like a fetus around the planet. What? That's right. <laughs> yeah, you end up, you end up in, a, in an all white bedroom with yourself, <laughs> with the old version of yourself that looks at That's you, right. but then you become the old one. What? <laughs> <laughs> Quantum intrication, yes. <laughs> you know, that would be an interesting way to, to kind of end life. I mean, ah. if you had that possibility before dying, be like, okay, now I want to find out what's in a black hole, and then you go. Yeah, you and it, it, so. yeah, and it would take more than your life to go in. In fact, that's that's crazy, right? Because the more you go, you go close. The the more space time is stretched, so. It might take by the end of the universe to for you to fail, actually in the black hole. <laughs> well, that's uh, yeah. But I, I like this uh, um, this metaphor of attractors, at least not black hole in in that sense. But the attractors because they it provides some kind of something that is opposite to uh, a buzzword um, because. Um, what about think, repulsive? Yeah, if you think of, of something that is defined, like when you put some, a label on something, it, it becomes defined. But what the label, uh, you know, uh, vacillates, yeah. and and I would say a black hole, uh, sorry, a rabbit hole is exactly the opposite of that. In that sense, it's it's hard to find a clear definition. It's hard to find some clear boundaries, even if they are set by someone else. You know, it's it's really hard to to find it, and so this is one of the nature of. So it, it goes with the absence of of something, as you said, Diana. Uh, yeah, but can rabbit holes have an inverse uh, charge? You know, instead of you going being attracted and going deeper and deeper into it, it just it swipes you out. Like for example, I'm thinking of um, maybe it's not a good example so uh, but like you know having a very earth shattering experience with your religion and you're mm. trying to in, in your pursuit to try and justify your religious belief you realize that there is no god does it mean you came on top of you know through the black hole into a different world or is did it just spit you out altogether so you you can no longer play with that rabbit hole mm. it's, it would be interesting I mean, with the transformative component, I can answer my question. It doesn't throw you out the same way you came from. You kind of go in and what was the, I think I was reading something about white holes. I mean, yes. now it's just an imaginary component of our mathematics and yes. unknown universe. But, you know, maybe at some point there will be such a thing like the the other end of the black hole, if there's <clears> something <throat> like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, if we if we go further in the uh, analogy, uh, yes, probably it is the case, but then matter has been rearranged, <laughs> so you are not really the same as as when you enter the 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 black hole. I would say, also, like like it, it it if it's repulsive, it's repulsive for you, like it, it changed something about you. I would say, in that sense. Or you just don't get in at all, like dark web. I never go on dark web. I find those rabbit holes quite threatening to, to me. I don't know. I don't know how to safely surf. And I don't even know what I need to look out for or what to search there. So what, Like weapons? <laughs> <laughs> of mass, de mass destruction? That's that's yeah. exactly the, the kind of thing you would look like uh, look at, uh, Diana. Right? <laughs> yeah, send me on the right rabbit hole. <laughs> now start a war. Is that also that you know it leads to action sometimes? You go deep enough on a rabbit hole and you find yourself in a very active space. You know, you you need to take action with every process of 
distilling a certain journey, it leads to, yeah, a new set of decisions that you make. Mm. Yeah, that's true. It's really metaphorical. <laughs> yeah, it also helps in, in the metaphor to, I think, describe the particles, right? A little bit like what is, is it a concept? Like what is the thing that is attracting what? What are the, mm. what's the unit that you're working with, right? So, so for example, you could use it at the level of concepts. And then Diana, to your point, is the concept of like no God a negative particle or a positive particle just, just happens to be the opposite of what it was that you were looking for. So you are attracted to a concept which is actually positive, right? So you go in, but something just happens to have greater gravity. Mm. So the concept of, you know, no God has a greater attractive capacity than the concept of God in that particular mm. example. So you, do, you know what I mean? Like, is it, it, it's, yeah. I mean, that's to base that everything, a life itself, it's information. Yeah. And whether these particles behave in a certain manner that they are still respecting their, you know, definition of life, whatever that is. But to, to, to right. consider information as, a, uh, you know, the block, the unit of the, this i mean it's kind of the the breathing air of the rabbit hole you cannot have air you have information everything turns into information so having to operate in the space really boils you down to a very um i don't know if it's an atomic level but you definitely merge into this you, you no longer have duality you can no longer think about the rabbit hole or what took you to that space you now have this holistic perspective you're either fully inside or fully outside and nowhere at the, you know nowhere at any point so i think this there's this component that now in this space we are uh, we are currently at we see information as very separate but then you know you you get into the the full rabbit hole and you're experiencing <laughs> hello <laughs> so then, then there's this holistic perspective that you build i think that's the the unity that comes deep down in the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm drifting into thoughts. Oh, I think I think the dog pulled Kevin <laughs> off one. Yes, <laughs> yes, she did. Yeah. Hey, don't play with my keyboard. <laughs> Must be part of the conversation. You can. She's like the metaphor is not working for me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to hug me. But you know, maybe you know, she's looking for the rabbit. We, we we talked about the rabbit hole, but what's a rabbit? You know, are we chasing a rabbit down the rabbit hole, or are we being the test rabbit of the rabbit hole? I don't know. There can be many roles to play. Are we the rabbits? <laughs> Perhaps at some point. I mean, to, to a certain extent, <laughs> when you go into a rabbit hole, you have a certain intent. You want to find out something, and you have an expectation of that what that something might be to you know a very vague concept. And then you know you begin your journey. You're still looking for that, but the deeper you go, you realize that that alters. So basically, the the nature of the rabbit changes. What you're chasing begins to alter in the process because your perception of it and what you're learning is beginning to construct a, and deconstruct certain components. Again, it goes back to information. Information becomes, it settles and in different forms as you, as you mm -hmm. progress to this, so. Well, so here's something very interesting. And I kind of, I heard this term before, but I wanted to look it up, which is the notion of the white rabbit, right? So in yeah. English, chasing the white rabbit means to chase the impossible, a fantasy or a dream. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, of course, it's uh, it comes from the uh, Alice in the Wonder Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also a Jefferson Airplane. And if you go chasing rabbit rabbits. 
yes, it's a it's a good song though. I don't I I didn't think about it. I mean, it makes all the sense because going to chase rabbits is yeah, it's pursuing fantasies. You're not actually looking for something authentic. You're just hooked on a certain plane of reality, it, and it comes with that sort of yeah expectations that it's going to be. Mm. It's not grounded in reality. Yeah, well, if we if we take the the story of uh, Alice in Wonderland and the the reason why she, she chased the, the white rabbit is because he did he he knows something that she wants to know and he never answered the question. He just said, "It's too late. It's too late. I'm too late. I have to go." And this is the reason for her to go in the the rabbit hole, actually. Mm-hmm. So going back to your going back to the fact that it's about information. And that the the quest of of well, when you, you find yourself because you don't necessarily realize right away that you are in a rabbit hole when you you know start the process of of uh, researching about something and reading about something when you realize that you are yourself in a rabbit hole. Uh, yeah, but what drives that's you? exactly that's you exactly know. the reason that you are looking for something even if it's not a clear answer that. And it, even if it's not a clear question in your mind, you are looking for something. There's something more to what, you know, triggered you into that process. And this is what you are looking for. And you don't know if you will ever have the, the answer of your question. So that's such, I, I do find the analogy of the relationship with uh, the book, Alice in Wonderland, uh, quite uh, not accurate, but makes sense. Yeah, that's what drives you, you know, like it's not a rational behavior that takes you towards a rabbit hole. It's curiosity. It's basic curiosity that's in it. And, you know, a child like Alice would just go and try. You don't necessarily have to have a justification. We're trying to make it because, you know, we're mature people. We're, you know, learning and we want to solve problems. But actually what makes the, the pursuit of a rabbit hole, it's curiosity. And, uh. Yeah, the fact I have... that we have learned. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say the fact that we are learning something in the process. That's nice. You know, that's a, a benefit. It's an addition to it. But mm-hmm. the curiosity is what drives us. Yeah, I agree. I, I wanted to say I have a, a, a more. Uh, I have read a more Lacan or Freudian uh, <laughs> uh, explanation of the reason why Alice goes into the rabbit hole, which is really not good. Uh, I mean, in both ways. I mean, the 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 reason is not good, and the text itself interpreted through, you know, uh, um, psycho psycho. Uh, what is the term? Psychoanalysis. Yeah, thank you. Uh, is not good yeah, at all. Psychoanalytical. It's 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 kind of the the party bummer. <laughs> Yes. And they say, no, it's actually it's uh, it's the libido and then there's the phallus and the yeah phallic. everything is about there. everything is about sex or or your mother so it's all on on the mother and the and wife the woman is hysteric yeah yeah always always that's the best explanation we can we can have of course <laughs> it does make sense to make it sense. <laughs> So what what's a rabbit hole? We are in a rabbit hole. The, yeah, but talking about bad philosophy and bad and bad science, but more bad philosophy as well. Uh, psychoanalysis is a good one. It's a good bad um, philosophy. It's easy to get bad, like it's intentions <laughs> and it's you know the storytelling with it that comes with it. It's it's really powerful. They are onto something, but the way they do it is just. Is this middle to high class, upper class, you know, and you bring these people who are so self-centered and they just want to tell you all the stories about their life and then you sexualize them as a, uh, it's, it's, it's a headache. And you know the... has ever done a psychoanalysis session, like a, a therapy? No. no, but I know some, I know some practitioners, unfortunately. Uh... <laughs> I hated the Lacanian ones. Yeah, and the worst is that they cannot not do the thing, even for random discussions. It's it's a nightmare. And they're uh, so bad at it. Trust and me, they're, they're much yeah. better at analyzing the world than this. Yes, yes, I know, I know. And the worst, the worst thing at all is like it's uh, in France, 
uh, if you go through, uh, you know, um, for whatever reason, you know, there's something like a, uh, that happens and, and you need uh, a psychological support, official one through the governments, they send you to a, psych a, a psychoanalysis. Yeah, just to help you, to be sure that if you are not willing to, you know, kill yourself after the, news. yeah, if you are not willing to kill yourself because of the events, uh, then you have a good reason to do it after the, <laughs> the session. No, Everyone that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's, a, yeah, that's a, a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, a rabbit hole all of a sudden widened and <laughs> yeah. a bit crooked. <laughs> what about you? What do you think, Adipta? What's what's your your take on this? Um, I don't know, but I think there can be more than curiosity. What drives us to drives us deeper into the rabbit hole? For example, um, let's say Kevin and I are having a discussion about a certain topic. And it just happens that I disagree with Kevin. So uh, let's say and, um, I'm a very egoistic person. So I would want to- prove You don't have to right be right egoistic now. to be, you know, to no, not agree with let's me. Just consider, <laughs> let's just consider it. <laughs> let's say a person A and person B, okay? Okay. Person A said something and person B disagrees. And let's say person B is very egoistic and wants to prove himself, right? So he will dive deeper into that topic and try to prove A wrong by giving some resources around that topic. Now, A is again, egoistic himself or herself. <laughs> so he or she will dive deeper into the topic and then try to pro prove B wrong. So that could also drive someone into that rabbit hole. So it, I think it, it's- It reminds me of Twitter that. discussions, it's funny. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what would yeah. make them actually go down the rabbit hole? Because I think people who disagree usually bring their known arguments and their best arguments to the table. In the moment where they have to explore uncharted territory, there's the risk that they will change their minds. They want to stick to that ground. So I think that it's it's there's a possibility that they might go to the rabbit hole and then even find an agreement or further separate. Mm -hmm. uh, but also to not actually go into a rabbit hole, just stay within the safe territory to, to hold your ground. It's more important yeah. to be right than actually know something. That's I mean, I've seen some senseless arguments on social media. Like they provide That's another yeah. thing. You know, it's, it's like it's social media, so it's necessarily the case, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> well, I think they're chasing that dopamine to prove themselves mm. once they prove themselves right. So. I, I, I would say that it's more like fear of dissonance than hmm. chasing the dopamine in that sense. Like as as a as human beings, we 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 tend to want to stay coherent, uh, you know, with hmm. with ourselves. So, um, yeah, I would Why say do it's, we want to do that, stay coherent with ourselves because we want to have a sense of consolidated self. Uh, yes. There are a few philosophical mm -hmm. trends who are trying to say to, to, to what extent your memory or the collective memory is important to uh, your identity. So for example, all of a sudden, if you are hit in the head and you don't remember anything about your life, will you still be the same person? Will you still relate to yourself in the way you related before, even though you don't have those memories? And then you can take the vice versa. Let's say the whole world gets hit in the head and they no longer remember you. So now you have to reconstruct, to explain yourself to them and how you are and will you still be that same person? So it's yeah. it's a crisis, you know, mm. to be in a state where yourself is shifting. It feels like the, the you know, you're dying, which is, you know, illusory. I mean, you, you have the Hinduism in your back door, so... <laughs> You, there's all I'm not religious. <laughs> you don't need to. I think it's better, but uh, uh, just to have that, you know, to, to think about the the self. What happens to the self when you meditate? You dissolve. You need to dissolve the self and the ego, actually. So, then, yeah. If you take like perspective from inactivism and embodied cognition, they they would state generally that uh, 
you know, um, your uh, the, the sensation, the perception of self, uh, and your like your um, what is the term? Um, your personality and your individuality is, uh, I mean, is um, constructed through um, through the, the the social. Uh, yeah. context that that goes around around you so it's like everything is uh, like things are fluctuant in that sense that it's um, it's a, a feedback loop between the environment and, and and you the the thing is like once once you have some things that you constructed over time and that appear to be uh, coherent with what you know from about the world and how it how it works and someone challenges that one person not all the people but just one person uh th th it creates a dissonance between what you know and what you do you you feel is is true and what is right and and what this person say and mm -hmm. like depending on the context you are not necessarily open to 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 add, you know, to add a perspective to what you know. And I would say like social media in general are not generating the right condition for that as well. So, because, because the social media, in, like, like I, I do see that all the time that some people are in certain way on, on Twitter or on Facebook or, or LinkedIn, even LinkedIn. And, um, and when you meet them in real life, they are totally different p people. Like from yeah. what you judge as a, as from a behavior perspective, mm -hmm. you feel like they are not the same person, and they would not go into you know um, um, being aggressive with you with their arguments as they are on social media. And this is because you 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 lost the, that extension of of self. The connection with mm -hmm. with social the social tissue is not really there. It's just there's an interface between 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 mm -hmm. you and, and this yeah. other person. So, yeah. You could say, like, the, the social media is actually creating these fla uh, fake rabbit holes where you think you're actually going somewhere deeper, but you're not doing anything. You're basically chasing your own tail, especially in these <laughs> polarities. And, uh, like, you know... It's I like this idea. I like and this idea. It, it is true. <laughs> and with the ego as well. The ego is a fake rabbit hole. You think you're deepening your sense of identity the more you think about it and you add components. Oh, I am uh, bisexual. I am uh, non-religious. I am a member of that community. I am this and that. And then you put all these together and you think you have a deep identity uh, and sense of self. But in fact, you just have a, a surface of things. You're not actually going uh, yeah, into the depth of, what, of who you are, whatever that yeah. is. Do you I didn't think that, that might have something to do with why people fight harder, like the yeah. dissonance, right? That, that it may be that this more tentative, assembled notion of the self actually make people more defensive and more likely to find reinforcing arguments rather than actually explore things. Because the Absolutely. whole notion of the sense is so tentative, right? And and. So, like almost arbitrary. Yes. Yeah. And and contextless, and and yeah. therefore meaningless. Like it means something to you, but what are the what are the guarantees that it means the same thing to someone else? Like it, it you can find you, you know you can find agreements and meaning because of 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 people within the same context, right? Mm -hmm. But when it's not the case, when you lo you lose this opportunity of shared understanding of things then only your definition can stand you know and i would say it it adds to the uh, to to the dissonance because that means to you that any other definition can only be a a, th a threat to to your understanding right mm -hmm. especially if that identity is actually assembled out of opinions rather than knowledge right yeah. Yeah. I was thinking. Uh, 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 I, I forgot the the other guy's name who came last session. Uh, Sebastian. 
Oh, Sebastian, yeah. yes. He yes, recommended yes. The, that short book on four agreements. And uh, there was this fresh in there. I actually got hooked on it. It was really, really light and nice. And it had this uh, expression of domestication of humans that mm. happens with what you're given. You're being served a certain amount of beliefs from society, from community, the stories you tell yourself. And you, you stay on this surface state where you're not actually exploring and you feel like this is all you are and you have to make sure that you're not losing that because if you lose that you're in under uncharted territory not having labels to label reality around you it feels like you're just a, a toddler who is looking helplessly for, for help so mm -hmm. it's uh, there's this powerlessness that comes with not having the ability to to name things and have shortcuts into your world yes yes and i, I would say that if we switch context a, a bit but it's just exactly the same in design uh when people come to know design through tools and and you know some certain methodologies they, they are sticking to labels they are sticking to and they just you know <laughs> Re regurgitating the same words, but they don't necessarily know what they they mean or what they could mean if they had done, you know, or went through the the, the rabbit hole of, you know, understanding the like the the things that are be behind the those those words and and how you can how they are just you know surface level things that can be recombined into totally different things if you had this knowledge and yeah and and that's funny because i was discussing with uh, uh recently with Adipta, we, we were uh, in an event for another community where there's a lot of people that are just start starting in the in the field and um we we, we discussed a bit about philosophy and design and 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 I just uh, you know I just said uh, I know it can it's kind of uh, you know uh, abstract as a as a as a sub, as a subject for discussion but I, I feel it's interesting and many people said well it's not abstract to me and I was really surprised. Sorry, which which, which concept specifically wasn't abstract? Like the 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 fact that we discussed about uh, the, the words ontology and epistemology oh, okay. and how it connects to. Uh, methods and tools and ways to know and stuff like that and people were just hooked to the discussion and it was like they say i can 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 say if i, I say you know something wrong but i do feel like they, they they perceived it as a as a refreshing discussion in the about design in general uh because yes most of the time you talk about surface level things like tools and, and methods but you never mm. discuss about the deeper, you know, uh, concepts and, and models that, that makes them what they are, right? And, uh, and I was surprised and I felt like it was a, a good sign that people just don't want to stick to that. It just appears that there's lacks of um, connection or ability to, to get to those, to those subjects uh, in a sense. So... Yeah, it, 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 it kind of surprised me and confirmed what some things that I had, like I felt uh, some signals I, I felt from from this kind of subject. So, yeah, just to to make connection between what, what we are discussing right now and <clears throat> and 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 design. Yeah. Yeah, because when you whenever you Google or you whenever you search for UX, because that's a UX community, nothing philosophical comes up and. And, and, and this is what attracted to me to, to this community because I read your articles and it was quite philosophical and it was vastly different from what I've been reading so far. So I think that's why they're attracted because it's so unique. It's something so new to them. Um, maybe that's the reason. Yeah, yeah it connects to it's something I shared last time. I shared <laughs> last time that I was discussing with someone that comes from the US, for instance, and, and for her... Uh, design in Europe is too philosophical, and they, 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 she feels like uh, designing mostly practical thing and 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 theories and stuff like that are just, you know, words. Uh, I'm 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 distorting a bit what she said, but 
it was the feeling I get out of okay. of of the of the comments, you know, and um, and actually it's not so true. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Diana, you you were saying something, and I just spoke spoke of, over you. No, no, no. I was just thinking about the uh, the depth. You know how tempting. You know it goes back to the attractors. Like these yeah. attractors might. You know, you have a certain appetite for depth. You know, if you're a bit more masochistic in terms of <laughs> critical thinking, then you'll go without waiting for an invitation. But others yeah. need to be taken, you know, slower so they don't suffer the shock of falling, you know, uh, and well. So I think that's that's interesting to see these attitudes. But I think in especially with design, you want to learn more. It's It's a general feel. For the, with different communities and whatever they do, that they want to learn more and better rather than because mm -hmm. it's it's becoming it's it is already highly competitive. So you want to stay on top of things. You don't want to be you know compete with AI and lose. So you need to add, bring this additional component that brings that adds depth to to what you do and who you are. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The the risk with that, I, I do feel like it's like to, you stick to trends. And only to trends. So you see only surface level things because it's it's what first it's what is easily accessible. That's something that has to be acknowledged. Trends are visible, so therefore they are easily accessible. But they but coming to to trends to understand what what is behind is is really difficult. And I, I you don't understand what is behind the trend going through the trend the trend because they, it's that it has no explanatory power you just see a, a wave uh, something that, ha that is happening but it's hard to connect it to you know underlying rules and structure that's that make them visible in the first place right so you need to sidestep you need to go somewhere else to understand what made this this trend and then you can have a, a different perspective about things but it's yeah. quite similar to the the concept of style right yeah. like style as a superficial thing that you can consume readily assembled or style seen as a way of assembling things mm -hmm. right so like a style versus style so when and, and it's in architecture it's a little bit easier if you look at home construction for example like here you have like something that's like a craftsman style home with beams and, and you know sticking out and, and those kinds of kind of rougher chunkier details when people think about that they think about the the total of it as yeah. opposed to a consistent set of techniques like applied yeah right and they're two very different things and most people don't care about doing that work of deconstructing what it means for something to look right and and when we did we did some work in in Asia and they, one of the things that we noticed was that there was a misunderstanding of proportion, that the bits and pieces were there and kind of glued on. So you would get the concrete poured home with the wood detailing, like literally glued onto the facade, but somewhat oversized, right? Mm. That it didn't, that the whole thing didn't work because it was a, an applique as opposed to a, you know, structural expression yes you know yes and that, this i think trends are kind of like that yeah yeah i agree like they, they are the end of the process so you see it's, it's like in innovation or you know in organization um i think it's uh not to like to, to talk about him again but uh it's it's like uh what something that dave snowden uh says about uh uh, joking about people that says that they 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 will apply the Spotify model, uh, in the sense that if you say that you just see the surface, you just see the the end result of what made Spotify what mm -hmm. what they are. But but copying what you see, that means the end of the process, does not provide you with the understanding of what it means to go there. Right. Right. So you you don't and it, and every organization is is unique. So you cannot just copy things and expect to work in the same way. And as as is architecture, uh, like there's many things that that 
contextually that 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 defines the the uh, the structure and stuff like that. Some decisions that you will have to take are right. dependent upon the the context where you build and uh, and and many things. So you're just copying what others do is meaningless in that sense. And and this is not what is taught in in architecture school for that reason. You you are taught to come to a process that allows you to to end with something that contextually works. And it, yeah. it's exactly the same thing with with trends and, and uh, other things that you, if you just copy, like you end up with, um, um, you know, those fake uh, houses in, in, in for uh, cinema and, in, you know, and, and stuff like that, that are just uh, pictures of walls. Yeah, movie set, yeah. Yeah, but, but you can go through it like easily because it's just a fake thing that mimicates uh, a, a real one, right? And, yeah. and mim- mimicating can learn you, yeah, it can be used as a way to, to as a game to understand some rules, I, I would say. So mimicking is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not, it's, it's not the thing that makes you, you know, copy something up properly, you know. No, it, it, if you're looking at it as an expression of certain principles, right, understanding how certain decisions were made along the way, and you mm. kind of reverse engineer then it becomes a valuable exercise. How is this effect achieved? What were the decisions that were made? What were the, I mean, you can say the tools in some cases, but the, mm-hmm. like the material decisions. We spend a lot of time dealing with the problem of precedent, right? We, like, just like you say, we see this over here, a client will say, we see this over here, or here are 10 websites we like, you know, and yeah. do this, or, and, and that, that there is a instructional component from that in that you can manage the dark matter of things like taste and preference or something like that, that you allows you to understand how it is that they're accessing cultural production. What kinds of things are they drawn to? But it does almost nothing to help you with whatever it is that you were designing for them in terms of the artifact that you're building. It's more yes. of a, it's, it's more of a help to the political lowercase p political making of the thing than it mm-hmm. is the expression of the thing that you're, that you're going to make. <clears throat> right. Um, it's, I find it to be a, a, in many projects to be something that we're consistently having to overcome and explain. Right. Also the, that the inability to understand that because you like two things separately doesn't mean that they could ever exist together on the same canvas, right? Mm-hmm. This page is really great. What about this page? You're like, well, okay, that's right, but they're two different sites done completely differently, and you know, and and, and we spend a lot of time walking people through that, the unbuilding of those things, looking at the principles that built them, that built them, and then try and explain to them how in their particular case, the concepts could be deployed. Yeah, applicability. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Because it has yeah. to be practiced in this specific. Yes. Which is the, the, the secret, dark or otherwise, of design. Yes. In, that it is an a- activity in a specific moment, right, as opposed to a and, universally applicable planning model. And, and I, I would say it's, it's what makes people navigating rabbit holes good. It's when they know what bits, bits of information is applicable to a certain context and that they are able to transpose that knowledge to another context because they know it's applicable there. And, and again, it doesn't, you know, necessitates this, these people in that specific context to go into the rabbit hole themselves and, you know, do, do all the process of connecting the dots to understand why, why this information is useful there, right? And but communicating communicating something which is kind of ephemeral in that way, in that it's part of the the kind of virtual nature of a thing before it actually becomes material, right? Mm-hmm. It's really difficult. Um, I, find, I mean, that's, I think that's one of the skills, one of the, the dark matter skills that you need as a designer is being able to communicate that very concept. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, there's a book I, I read like a long time ago, and with whom with which I, I was disagreeing on, on many things. I think it's articulating the design decisions. I I, I talked oh, about are you it. Like, one? Yeah. 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 I, I, I have I somehow have two copies of that, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, a, a when I read it like some years ago, um, I was starting as a digital product uh, designer. Um, it's it's a long time. It's like it's about <laughs> seven years. Oh my, and and um. Um, yeah, I, uh, someone recommended me to read it uh, because we had some difficulties with some stakeholders, and he yeah. said, "Well, I read this book, and it changed my, the way I, I see I see how to handle stakeholders." And oh, and yeah, and you read it, and you say, "Oh my!" But if you follow the rules, you're like a dictator. Like it's it's an <laughs> it's a no, really, it's it's the worst. Yeah, some of the, the the recommendations are the worst thing that you can recommend to someone that just doesn't know how to handle people, really. Yeah. And it can be really dangerous. And and but it's still for for many things. There are this is a good book because if you understand applicability, you know what not to do <laughs> in many contexts. <laughs> you know, so that's funny. Uh, well, who was it? Who was it that said that about strategy? Somebody said that strategy is mainly knowing what not to do yeah but, but it has, it's much more about like not doing things than it is about doing things yes yes don't, don't do that yes but, but 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 exactly the same thing when you are like in a you know when you're in this meeting and there's some people that's just and you just disagree with what every word he said i just bullshit and you know it and you want to say something because you just you know boiling internally like you and you just shut your mouth all along because you know saying something at this moment is 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 contraproductive and might be worth as as a you know worse as a result that if you just shut your mouth and go back to this to this person later on in a different context but there's not this meeting with many deciders in it and then blah 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 <laughs> and speak to him personally and say okay I know that what you meant and blah blah blah, blah but and taking all the forms and you know all the things that you need to do to convince this pe- this person that it's just shitty what he does, <laughs> he's done, you know, uh, uh, and it's exactly that. The, because if you if you yeah if you follow some of the, the the guidelines in the book, you you end up in meetings just pointing people with fingers and say, you know, uh, the, no, really, really yeah. no. I thought you were going to say you wait till later when you've got them in a dark alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, just to prove a point, just to prove. A point. You know, it's 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 the it's context that 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 tells you if it's the it's, if it's appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> <In that sense. laughs> I'm in a dark alley with my. Sure, and I will convince you yeah. with all yeah. my will and power that you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think from my little life experience, I've learned better than to argue with people. Like <clears throat> trying to, to explain yourself to people who are looking for an argument. I think it's... Uh, it's so counterproductive and yeah. I don't know, let's say 90% of the situations, maybe there are some where you could actually do something useful, but yeah. Well, if, you know, I'm yeah. thinking about these different people who are starting arguments. They are looking to deconstruct you for some you know, reason because that's how they feel like they're smarter or they're better or I don't know, that's, that's how they behave in society. They don't know any better. So, like having those conversations, I think it's so useless, especially in design and anywhere else. To be fair, but there there is a there is a kind of a threshold where if you don't say anything, and I think this threshold is personal, but if you don't say anything, you're on the wrong side of your professional obligation. Yeah, and I think that that's really super tricky. In yeah. a lot of these cases, you, you don't want to argument. You don't want to have an argument for ego's sake, right? That's you can always walk away from those. I find but it challenging. It's one hard. Be, what's that? I mean, it's hard to to not for like when it's an argument to if it yeah it's it's difficult to to escape the 
the the fact that it it goes really quickly into personal attacks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, but yeah, I agree with you. So go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. But, but yeah. I, yeah, I think there is like a. I mean, you do need strong arguments to make sure that even though they disagree with you, you couldn't care less because they're just <laughs> not. You know, they're not making the right point. If they act all like, oh, I've got a hunch, and you're like, no, but this is data. This is evidence that you're just completely wrong. Then there's no no point in you, you. You've done your job. You've explained what you need to do, and you can always impose. If you're not agreeing with this, if we can't find a consensus, then we yeah. shouldn't work together. And yeah. that may change the frame a little of the engagement. Yeah. And that that's been we have walked away from projects and i've even known while the disagreement was happening and not even disagree like they're not um contentious disagreements in terms of you know they're not they're not even personal but they're usually around things like the outcome of a certain process or a certain decision making at a certain point you know in the course of having this disagreement about ways forward that this is one of those ones where after the call, you have to go and figure out if you want to keep working on the project, <laughs> right? And so yeah. you tend to kind of, I would, in those situations, I would push harder knowing that at that point I have nothing to lose because we'll probably walk yeah. away from the project anyway. So then you might as well dig your heels in, right? And then there are other ones which are not the hills to die on, as they say, right? But there are yeah. some, I think, where, where you, I think you have an obligation to, um, you know, put a stake in the ground and basically say, so here's a line that we need to hit. Whether that's about yeah. you know, collecting data on users or, you know, like it's not, it's not necessarily about aesthetic things. It's about deeper structural kind of issues. Mm-hmm. But I think it boils down to one thing for you, maybe like as a designer, not to take it personal. Maybe in you know in that heated mm. conversation, taking it personally will help make you lose your way. It will make make you mm. lose your arguments. So actually, distancing and understanding that they want to have a point, even though they don't have it, and they're like looking for ways to heat up the conversation. It's uh, it's actually creating enough distance and. Let's, yes. you know, the person even blow that steam off because at some point they will get tired. Yeah. So, and actually that builds an experience that you didn't engage with them in a negative way. I think that that happens uh, like a couple of times in, in my experience that led to a more positive experience afterwards because mm-hmm. I didn't try to, to engage on that level. I would just be like, okay, I understand that. And, you know, just try and go around, <laughs> but uh, not just listen. I was just listening. That's that's the only thing I did. And that made them more positive in maybe like 10 minutes or so. Yes. Trying to always interrupt and say something that caused even more heat. Oh, yeah. I, I would say, other, I would say, if you, oh, sorry. Was, Go ahead. sorry yeah, no, I was going to say the other thing that's interesting is part of going through design school and specifically the critique process is that yeah. you learn to take things less personally through that process. And one of the things that's important for us to remember as designers is that even though you might not be taking a heated conversation personally, the other side might be because they don't have yes. your training. Right. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a trickier one sometimes where you're, you're able to blow it up a little bit and yes. not care. Right. Um, especially if you have an internal, like I know that with people internally on my team, uh, things can get really heated usually in a kind of a funny way, but you know, it's, it's a no, it's a, it's a really open conversation. You can't take that same attitude to an external conversation because you have a thicker skin than other people. Well, I, I yeah, there's two things that, that I want to say about, but you just discussed because I, I feel it's really important. And I mean, it's hard to get to have an argument with someone if you don't have time to process what the other said. And if you don't, if the other doesn't have time as well to process what you you might say, and so I I I, I appreciate arguments and and debates in that sense with someone if we both take the, our time to go in it, and so it makes it obviously less personal right away because yeah. th- there's no w- justification in personal attacks because because it's meaningless in the in that circumstances. Um, yeah, like, and and it can seen... be a learning experience in in that sense because you you 
better understand another position. Uh, I, I mean, you push them in providing you the best argument they can they can make about their position, and and with time, it it, it is a strong way to. Then, then I can take his position with the best arguments possible as well. I mean, you know, and I can, uh, uh, you know, there's a straw man and there's a steel man, and then I can steel man their position in that sense. And this is what I appreciate in arguments. It's the only way for me to go into arguments because otherwise it's, it's as you said, it's go quickly into heated conversation, uh, like really personal attacks and, and it's just frustrating. At the end, you just say, oh, I wanted to say that and that and that. And, you know, you focus on what you, you missed as an opportunity to justify yourself. And if you feel just shitty in the end. And the other, you, and you, and you, if you look at what the other position is, he can only feel shitty about this conversation as well. Like, it's, it's I mean, no, no one wins at the end, right? Everyone loses. Um, you're and you're I, pointing I, I, at something really yeah. interesting there, you know, just to, to, to build on what you said. Yeah. It's like parking okay. the thought, parking the argument yeah. and leaving there for a while, you know, just being able, to, even in this community, if we get the sense that it's getting heated and we're not getting anywhere, just to have that response, like, let's leave it for another time. Let's, yes. l- yeah. you know, do our research and come back to it if it's necessary, if it's still valuable yeah. for us. And I think that's, yeah, it builds quite well on what you're saying on how to create the steel man and the straw man and see that it, you're not doing yourself much good if you're not respecting uh, the position of the other and doing yeah. justice to that argument. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and the fact that you, but it requires time and, and you need, you, you need to have this time at your disposal to go into that kind of thing as well. So this is where it's tricky, but uh, reformulating what others said and like the basics of good debates, you know, it's like, reformulating to make sure that you don't just misunderstand what the other said and stuff like that. But it takes time. And then it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a real cognitive effort to do it. Oh, and most people do don't that. want to, don't want to go there. Like most people I know, they just don't want to go there. They have their set of arguments, like just prepare to tack, 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 and that's it. <laughs> and just, they, and they, they leave like quickly and they just leave you with that. And okay. But what's the point? Did you learn anything about the other position? No, nothing. You're just providing your, you know. But that's not, but that's not the point of that approach. Yeah, of course. The point of that yeah. approach is not to learn. The point of that approach is to, you know, assert, like perform your position. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so to what you said before, I, I, I would say it, there's, a, there's circumstances where replying to someone just for the sake of it is a good thing. Because you are not trying to convince this specific person to change his mind, but you know he has an audience. And if you if you truly believe that this person is doing harm, mm. you know, telling what whatever he says, it's it's good anyway to just contradict his position, just to show that he's not the he's you know that people tend to be like in uh, in this bubble when the audiences of this kind of person, of the characters, you know, they tend to be, they tend to be in this bubble and they all see these are uh, the arguments for whatever position they all see, you know, whatever evidence that, that, that might appear as, you know, the only, the only way is to believe what, whatever this person is saying. Right. And if you arrive and you just contradict and show that there's other, other perspectives about this specific subject, and it's just that you don't care about what this person will reply, but you care about what others will read and understand from that and might be thinking that they might be misinformed or they might be wrong on that. And just opening a new door and, you know, perspectives. But this is the only way, uh, this is the only time where I see it's it's a good thing to, you know, uh, to, to just have an argument for, for the sake of it. Um, because there's great, like there's a greater perspective to to it, right? Um, but that's the only time. And 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 it, this reminds me of uh, we had someone we, we like I, I'm participating in, in creating a, a, a teams like some years ago, and we had someone that was already in the company but was in a, another department and was like the, the the only designer in his side of the company, and so we created this design 
team and we said, oh, well, just join us. And and it was the the, the worst experience I had with, with an individual and, and, a, and a designer. Uh, um, he came from graphic design and uh, he was doing like really not so good in my point of view and it was shared with <laughs> not, so, not only me so uh, at the beginning I was I was thinking oh it's only me that that believe that he says shit and he does shit but no it was not only me so I would say okay maybe it's not uh, just me who has personal thing against this person <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, and and yeah we had arguments about like he had strong position about colors and like stupid things I, I was saying oh, but, but we don't really care about the color of this fucking button until we know what <laughs> it's, you know what what the what the point of using it in the first place right and he said but it's not about ux all the time blah 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 and I said, what's it, what this nonsensical like against ux what does it what that means like i you know and and we had every time we met we had like a, a clash, like it was a clash each time and it was counterproductive. Like it, it was not, you know, this kind of debate that was useful for, for the project or for, for, for the team. It, it was just frustrating all, all along. And, you know, and, and we were better at the end when we were not discussing together. Like we, <laughs> we tried to, I, 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 we, we, we had the deal, like when we meet, we just don't say a word to accept it. Hello. And that's, that's it to get back. Like, we were not discussing to, at all because, because it was a nightmare. Each time he was saying like just stupid things and, uh, you know, like, and, and standing to the position, whatever it takes, like, but, but, but what's the point? Like if he doesn't even try to like, Okay, work with others. Like it was just about him and what he believed he was right about, and you know, and 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 you know, and so many people in the team worked with him, and they were like all comply, uh, you know, uh, uh, crying about his behavior, like reckless lone cowboy that that believes that he's right about everything, and oh my, oh my, it was a really hard time to to handle, and yeah. This is when you know that you have to stop discussing at all with, with someone, you know, just stop. That's, that's yeah, the end. The, there's this saying, it's like, if you want to talk, people will, uh, like, will think you're stupid. But if you talk, people will know you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's... You know, because, I mean, you know, going back to our world of design and rabbit holes, it's you are likely to say a lot of stupid things in the process of learning, but you're yes. likely to say even more stupid things in the process of non-learning when you're trying to just stick to your opinions. That's when it gets really <laughs> dumb at some point. And yes. that really harms the, the overall process and any form of collaboration. But, because, uh, because you have no mechanism in place to adjust oh, I lost you guys. alleged automated half uh, yeah half spontaneous you know it's like a like a Tourette syndrome but <laughs> just standardized <laughs> standardized <laughs> like that Man, we talked about so many things now. Like I, I'm, I'm having a strange retrospect to how we started. We went on a rabbit hole, and then yes. and another rabbit hole, and another one. <laughs> so, Did you find your white hole? Uh, I was gonna say something very, <laughs> very bad. I had this morning. I was reading about something, and there's something called anal bleaching. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my god. That blew my mind. <laughs> okay. Well, now, 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 uh, now the really the thing I'm really looking forward to is uh, Kevin's write up, the summary of the conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah. is, is this session <laughs> recorded? I mean, oh we need god. to ask is this recorded? <laughs> yes, it is. Unfortunately for us. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Next time you let me know, I won't say that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm educational, so I need that for whatever reason. Yeah. That might be a rabbit hole on its own. 
<laughs> you want to learn more? <laughs> it goes back to the very, very beginning of the conversation I walked in on where, where Kevin was saying nothing is really artificial. <laughs> <laughs> or, or was it everything is artificial? I can't remember. I, I didn't get enough of the conversation. But either well, way... I- I was not, yeah, standing for a position. I was just expressing Spinoza's position about, okay. yeah. about, about humans. Now, now, that you've, now that you've said that, we've, we've unfortunately literally gone full circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's not... So short answer to your question, yes, we found the white hole. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I stopped the recording now (laughs) (laughs) because it cannot, yeah.